Hello, welcome. Pastor John here. I am. Today we're going to continue our series going through the Bible. And we're in the Old Testament, and we're still with the Old Testament prophets. Today we're going to be looking at the book of Nahum. And um, our passage is in the first chapter of Nahum. So please open your Bibles and if, um, go to Nahum chapter 1. Uh, verses 2 to 3. Nahum, chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. Okay. And here we read. The Lord is a jealous God, filled with vengeance and rage. He takes revenge on all who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to get angry, but his power is great. And he never lets the guilty go unpunished. He displays his power in the whirlwind and the storm. The billowing clouds are the dust beneath his feet. God bless the reading of his word. God is awesome. God is awesome. So in this Bible passage here, um, we learn more about um, uh, the awesomeness of God or the greatness of God. And uh, so a little bit of background here. Um, Nahum is a prophet from Judah. And um, he's an Old Testament prophet. As we said, we're still in the Old Testament. He's working around <clears throat> circa 612 BC. And uh, he is announcing God's judgment against Nineveh. That is uh, Assyria at the time. Assyria. So the reason for this is because... Um, the Ninevites um, are cruel, they're full of idolatry and evil. So um, this is an oracle here revealed to Nahum. Um, an oracle is a kind of special rev revelation from God. And um, it's similar um, to the words um, prophecy or revelation, right? It's, 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 it's just a special revelation from God uh, that God gives the prophet Nahum here. So oracle, prophecy, or revelation, um, <clears throat> you can, you know, if you if you want to use it in a similar sense, that's okay. Um, you can do that. Um, the text here um, reveals God's sovereignty and, as we said, God's awesomeness. So our topic is, what does God's awesomeness mean for us, for you, for me, for all people? So in verse 2, it says, Jealous. Jealous refers to God's own honor. That means um, God has um, divine attributes we do not have. So God's jealousy is different um, than what we as human beings uh, you know, would call jealous. And, we've, and we read more about this um, uh, and are encouraged and admonished um, uh, to understand the difference here. So Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, Verse 19 to 21. Romans 12, verse 19 to 21. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will, heap shame, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So, God bless reading of this word. So, um, that's uh, an admonishment here. Leave all, you know, vengeance and uh, these uh, reaction or different kinds of jealousy, leave that in God's domain. So never fight evil with evil, right? So that's very important. And then in verse 3, um, when it says slow to get angry, God is slow to get angry, that means that God is patient. Yes, he can get angry, and, and he does, as we read throughout the Bible. Um, uh, but generally, he's um, he's patient. And, and one of the reasons is, is um, that he desires, God desires or would like it to be that all people come to him and turn to him in repentance. 
that's why he's patient. And oftentimes that's why, um, you know, when we see evil or um, things, uh, you know, why is there evil going on and it seems like God is not doing anything about it. That's one of the reasons, um, in addition to God's sovereignty, uh, is his patience. Because he wants all the people, <laughs> every evildoer, wherever it may be, right, um, to, uh, to turn away from their sins, to repent and to, um, to turn to God. So it's just one of the things to understand. Um, but his patience does run out at times, and it does so. And we read that all over the Bible as well. So we don't want to test or try God in that sense. So the word will, whirlwind right, refers to God's all-powerful attribute. That means he's omnipotent. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. So God is revealed here in this passage uh, we just read as all powerful. Um, he's vengeful against enemies. He's slow to get anger, um, but he's also good and compassionate. And uh, but he's also just. In other words, nobody gets away with anything. Very important, right? We read that in our verse. So we see the awesomeness of God ultimately expressed in uh, Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. More accurately, the life of Christ. The life of Christ, his death on the cross, and his resurrection and his ascension. It's awesome. Really something to really something we have to consider. And so, um, how are we going to, how are you going to respond to God's awesomeness? All right, so ask yourself, do you understand who God is? Right? Do you understand who God is? Sometimes we have to remind ourselves as believers who God is. And so in 2 Peter 3, 9, Peter writes, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. God bless you in his word. As we said, that is what God wants, but unfortunately, not all people will turn to our Lord Jesus Christ with a repentant heart. And um, there are unfortunately eternal consequences for that. And uh, as we said, people send themselves to hell. It's not God who does it. People themselves do it by rejecting Jesus Christ. So something to keep in mind. So continuing on the awesomeness and realizing what God is like, we read in the prophet Jeremiah chapter 9, Verses 23 to 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. We read, This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord, who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. God bless the reading of his word. So we see here God's awesomeness um, demonstrated in, um, in his justice. In other words, nobody gets away with anything. All right. So um, this is a big one and there's a certain... Uh, part of God's awesomeness that is also seen in Jesus Christ. So um, uh, remind yourself, um, as you do understand who, uh, who God is, and uh, Jesus is God in the flesh, so remind yourself the best place before God is to, um, is to be humble, surrendered, and repentant. And why is that so? Why is that the best position to take in our hearts? Nahum, in chapter 1, verse 2, writes, The Lord is a jealous God, filled with vengeance and rage. He takes revenge on all who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. And we see this um, as, we, we, as Jesus uh, clears the temple. We often think of Jesus as um, all-loving, all-knowing, and, and, and gentle and humble, which he is. But we also see um, his, um, his uh, 
rage uh, expressed in the in the gospel of mark for example so uh, i encourage you to read along right um one of the few times when jesus is uh, expressing this uh, attribute of god as god in the flesh so mark chapter 11 verses 15 to 17 so if you want to read along you have your bible open that's good uh, mark chapter 11 verses 15 to 17 when they arrived back in jerusalem jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices he knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves and he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace he said to them the scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations but you have turned it into a den of thieves god bless you on this word so this is a harsh but very important truth about jesus um, concerning um, the awesomeness of god and god's justice and also um, that god god is also venge uh, vengeful right we must understand that and heed this so in the end as uh, you consider God's awesomeness, what really matters is this, as, as Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God bless you, know his word. So uh, may that be an encouragement to you. I find it very encouraging. I'll read this verse one more time. So we see God's awesomeness here as Paul writes in Romans 5 verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God bless you in his word. May God bless you and keep you.